Long time no see. For those of you that have been here before, welcome back. My name is Ben. For those of you that have not, today I want to talk about how I build a research paper reading process that hopefully will set you up in good stead for the entirety of your academic or research-based career. I think all of us have been guilty when it comes to reading research papers of sometimes printing them out, sometimes taking notes in the margins, sometimes reading them electronically, sometimes making notes on something like Word, sometimes not making notes at all, sometimes not even reading the papers at all. Uh, I want to give you a systematic way of creating an organized approach to thinking about the research information that you read that hopefully will streamline the process for you uh, and give you better insight and better understanding of the field that you're operating in. I think it's really important to think about uh, that if you are going down a research-based career path, what you are doing when you're reading research papers is really providing yourself with the ammunition to make informed and intelligent insights and steer the course of your research uh, for the entirety of your professional career. So making sure that you have a structured way of collating information and analyzing information is really important. With that as set up, I want to jump over to the platform that I use, which is called Protolist, uh, to help you uh, really build a system, I guess from the ground up, I kind of want to show it because I appreciate if I just launch into the one that I currently use, uh, probably a whole bunch of stuff will get lost. And I always think it's difficult seeing someone's perfectly finished, polished process. We're going to start baby steps uh, with putting a template together uh, and logging our first research paper and then some of the things that I typically look for. So without further ado, let's jump in. So this is the platform as you start. Uh, this is the getting started page that comes with each of uh, any new Protolist uh, workspace that you make. I've just added a quick game plan page of things that maybe I want to talk about. They are uh, threefold. One, a strategy for reading, kind of thinking for a second, what are we actually reading for? What's the purpose? And in that purpose, what are the key criteria that we want to collect information around? And equally, that we want close to the surface, close to our fingertips, uh, so that we can grab it later on if we're trying to write a paper of our own uh, or just do some referencing or maybe run an experiment or any of those sorts of things. Number two, I want a fast system for recall, uh, and I'll kind of show you how I do that in this system. Uh, and number three, how we actually then go from taking knowledge logged in our system, in our platform, to outputting the point, the point in all of this, creating new knowledge, or at least referencing old knowledge uh, to make sure that our new research themes are going along the right direction. So what I want to do in this platform uh, is first create a new page, which I'm going to call research papers. Uh, if you have a cup of tea, feel free to have a sip of tea alongside me. Uh, hopefully you're not doing quite as much talking as I am. Uh, I'm going to call it research papers. And I'm going to turn it into a table. We have a few options here. We can turn it into a text editor, a table, a PDF, or a web page. I might get to a couple of those, but for the time being, I want to think about tables. Table is uh, and it operates just like many other platforms. You can upload documents into it. In fact, I'll upload the first one now, which I have a research paper that I'm interested in reading at the moment. These can be PDFs. Equally, they could be uh, web pages. I'll maybe show that at some point in a future video. Great. We have a PDF uploaded. If we click open, it opens. Fantastic. Uh, I want to go back to this previous page for a second, and I'll just get rid of these properties that come with. Uh, actually, I'll keep that one. I'll come with the process uh, with the platform to pause for a second and explain an idea to you. When you go about reading a paper, particularly if you're doing it systematically, you, whether you know it or not, will be looking for key concepts within that paper, things that you believe maybe or don't believe. Uh, maybe methods, maybe results, maybe motivations for why the experiment was conducted, maybe references to other experiments or research that has been conducted in the past. I'm an experimental physicist, so I'm going to talk about experiments probably. Um, and in doing so, you are re uh, reading that information and 
potentially locking it. Maybe if you're someone that highlights uh, as they read or annotates as they read, maybe you give it a highlight or give it a note in the margins or something like that. What I want you to get in the habit of doing is making an active effort to record that information as and when you find it so that at some point in the future, you don't need to go around digging for that fact or that tidbit, you have it immediately to hand. To do that, this platform introduces an idea called atoms. Atoms are kind of a bite-sized piece of information. Uh, I'm gonna show you an example of how you were to capture an atom. Uh, you can control click a page and it'll open on the right hand side. That's often how I use it. Really the process is as simple as highlighting something of interest. Uh, I'm gonna pick slightly arbitrarily this one here and clicking capture atom. Awesome. That idea we can immediately see has been raised out of the page and in to the top level uh, of our table. So what you can do is create a set of uh, different categories. Maybe we'll call this one key ideas. Uh, and you can filter those particular atoms by any page that exists in your repository. So I'm just gonna quickly in this filtered section here, make a new page called key ideas. Uh, and I will add it to all pages. That's made that atom disappear. And the reason for that is because this idea at the moment isn't tagged by key ideas. So it's not showing up in this filtered version of that column. I'll add it to the atom and then it will immediately show up again. And what this does, it gives us a framework where we can capture different sorts of information and present it immediately in table view. If I were to close that, open this atom again and, and want to reference it at some point in the future to find where this idea came from, obviously not a very meaningful idea, but I just captured a ra random one. All we'd have to do is click on the source tag to find where that atom actually came from. So clicking on it immediately takes us uh, back into the document so we can read the context above and below. I'm gonna set up a couple of different um, atom criteria that might be interesting. I mean, specifically to me as an experimental physicist, I typically was looking at things like uh, experimental methods, results, and say like past papers that I maybe wanted to reference or read at some point in the future. So I'm gonna set up those atoms by just creating a new property, switching it over to atom, calling it, uh, let's call the first one methods, creating a new page, calling it methods. I don't have a methods page yet, so I'm gonna create a new one. Uh, I will file it in all pages um, and any methods that will be, uh, I, I tag will be showed there. And then I'll just do one more, I'll call it results. Ba, 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 ba. Turn it into atoms, results, make a new page, done. Cool. Now, typically when I go to read a paper, I do a few things first. First, I'll read the abstract. This is a uh, recent report that has come out on double slit experiment done by a group at Imperial, I think, uh, Imperial College London, that have measured the diffraction experiment in time rather than in space. It's interesting if you're an optical physicist. Uh, it's probably not interesting if you're not. Um, but I usually go about reading the abstract first to understand exactly what's happening in the experiment or what they're trying to do. It'll give me a quick summary of what the results are. Then my usual way of reading would be to read through all of the figure representations first to try and understand the different data sets or the different experimental setups that we use to collect those data sets. And then finally, I'll read the results. Um, I'm going to do that quickly and just pull some of the information together across those uh, three different areas. If you ever want to access your um, properties that you have created from your table, you just toggle this little switch here. You can see the key ideas property that we've made and already tagged something to. I've also got methods, I've also got results. You could also add something like uh, citation. I always spell that word wrong. And you could go into this. I usually grab how to cite the article as I'm capturing this in. And I just drop it there so that I've got it later if ever I do need it. Um, I'm gonna spend a couple minutes just reading the methods and the results and then I will get back to you. my light has gone so bright. Uh, the other thing that you can do, I forgot to say, why is my light so bright? It's crazy. Whoa, chill out. 
Uh, the other thing that you can do, I forgot to say, is rather than clicking capture atom and typing in your relevant tag, you can also just drag this into the relevant bit. So this is part of uh, the methodology. I'm gonna just drop it in here. It will automatically create an atom for me, tag it by methods, uh, and it will be located here, kind of nicely separated. Again, if I scroll somewhere and then click, it will drag me back to where it is relevant in the document. Uh, you can add a whole bunch of other different property types, um, which I won't cover, but have fun kind of exploring uh, if you are interested. You can use any platform. I just find this one's useful because it's built around this whole annotating infrastructure. So I think it's really good for researchers. Cool, that's broadly everything that I wanted to grab out of this article. That's typically how long it takes me to read an article, maybe sort of five to 10 minutes or so. Uh, if I am really interested, obviously it's quite a short article. If I am really interested, I'll then do a bit of a further reading, but for our purposes today, I wanna to talk through just some of the other kind of infrastructure pieces that I think are important to think about. So let me jump back to my research papers uh, and I'll close that property. And I'll just broadly make these look a little bit nicer. Um, so here, as I build a repertoire of all the different research papers that I read, I will have, hopefully, assuming that I've read them all uh, and been diligent in annotating them, all of the key ideas, methods, results, and citations uh, appropriate to each um, paper that I read. If at any point in the future, I want to look for a particular idea, point that I wanted to touch as t uh, a kind of point number two was a quick system for recall. The key thing that I found both in my PhD and the little bit of postdoc work that I did and in the work in industry was that I could often remember a key fact or a key idea, but I couldn't quite remember where it had come from, exactly whether I'd remembered it correctly, uh, or importantly, how to find the source material so that I could um, read the kind of context around that initial idea. The goal for uh, building a robust digital repository of your reading uh, kind of work is to be able to quickly research it, find information uh, that is important to you. To do so, you can go into the all pages uh, column in your sidebar, I'm using all the words to describe that, <laughs> that idea. Uh, and usually I can remember a couple of kind of key words or key facts. So something that I found interesting was the idea of the asymmetry in this research paper um, on the red hand side versus the blue hand side of the spectrum of this diffracted light. I can only really remember as much as that. So I'm gonna try and type in some keywords, asymmetry, uh, and straight away that core concept has been found by the system, um, which I can read. And if I'm interested, go back and find in the paper, uh, just here, the asymmetry interfer interferogram, that's a hard word to say, uh, is explained by the time evolution of the phase, the complex reflection coefficient causing a Doppler shift in the spectrum. There we go, kind of interesting if you're a physicist. Um, but the point being, you will often find those key ideas that really the worst thing as a researcher that you can spend your time doing is in information re-retrieval. It's fine finding it the first time, that's a mouthful to say, but it's really annoying when you know the fact to have to re-find that fact. This system hopefully will allow you to go straight to the, kind of the heart of the matter, I suppose, and find exactly the research paper that is important to you and the fact within the research paper that you actually need. As a point number three, I just wanna talk very quickly, because I think otherwise we risk feeling like we're creating a, a nice silo of research information to say how you would actually go about turning some of these ideas and annotations and captured information into some output. Whether that's a research paper or a literature review or uh, any other kind of piece of science communication or something like that that you might be drafting. Um, and here I think is where the system really works nicely. So on the, uh, I'm gonna go back to my research papers. Uh, I'll keep that one open for now. Actually, I'm gonna make a new document and I'm gonna call it uh, report <laughs> for want of a better word. And I'm gonna change it this time straight into a page. It exists on the left-hand side for me um, to get 
different pages open on diff different sides, you just click on the respective side. Um, I'll click on this side and you click the page that you would like to open. If I'd like the report on this side, I'll give this side a click and click report. It will be here. What I'm going to do now is just open that uh, page that I read, uh, the manuscript that I read, and I'm going to open the sidebar to give me access to all of the key ideas. So if I'm going to write a report, typically what I'll do is think about what the structure of that report is first. So I might say uh, maybe I'm doing a literature review of all of the literature around this kind of area. Obviously, I've only got one paper, so I'll be limited, but um, I'll set that out as a bit of a framework. So maybe I'll start with motivation. Uh, maybe I'll start with a review of experimental approaches. Uh, and then I'll finalize with some commentary about the results in the field uh, and future direction or something like that. There we go. That's an easy way of building a kind of literature review framework if you're an experimentalist. As and when I read through each paper and uh, sort through different pieces that hopefully might be useful to me, um, I can integrate them into a document that I'm writing by simply dragging them over. So there's a couple bits that I thought were maybe interesting out of the methods. Uh, this bit was one, conventional spatial double split experiment. I can drag it in and straight away it will reference uh, the original paper that it came from. Again, if I click this reference, it will take me to where in the paper um, this idea actually is so I can read around it for further context. But in doing so, you can very quickly turn that scary thing of a blank page into something that has some um, immediate structure about it that, yes, it's not yet in your own words, uh, but at least like the facts that will underpin the ideas that you want to talk about are there. Um, I usually, oops, that was the same one twice. I usually use that, there we go, uh, to at least get some words on the paper that then allow me to kind of sift and think um, and put further kind of context in between the information that I'm really looking for. Uh, and in doing so, it makes the writing process significantly quicker, I find. I'm going to pause there rather than sit and write an article in front of you uh, because I have this article to write. Um, and I'm going to leave you with just a couple of ideas to uh, kind of reiterate. Find a system that allows you to collect the entirety of the knowledge that you will come across in your research career rather than just a single um, research paper reading activity. The temptation always is to just print those things out right in the margins and then immediately lose where that physical copy has gone. I would strongly encourage you to stick it on a digital platform, whether it's Protolist, whether it's Notion, whether it's uh, Rome Research or Obsidian or any of those. Um, find a platform that really works for you uh, and start uploading stuff into it and start having a method by which you can um, reliably collect ideas the same way across each paper, because then you'll become increasingly sophisticated. You'll become better at finding those core ideas and sifting them out and making sure that you have them to hand as you go about doing further research or writing activities later down the line. I'm going to leave it there. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.